Hey everyone, how are we all doing? And welcome back to Middle Earth Gaming. And it seems like GW has actually lost their minds because we've gotten so much content uh, today for uh, our Middle Earth Strange Battle game. And I'm gonna go through it all with you today. Now I'm just gonna go through the Angmar article or spoilers. Uh, you guys probably all seen it already anyway. Um, I'm not gonna go talk about the new edition in this video. I'll be doing a separate video tomorrow about that because I think that needs a video into itself and I think we should just keep it separately. Because um, of course, I assume, this is just me speculating, that this is probably going to be coming out before the new edition is going to be coming out. Um, but I just do want to say something about this new edition. Um, like I said, I'll keep my thoughts and opinions about it until the next video because I don't want to get bogged down in this video all about because there's a lot to talk about uh, just with that. But I just want to say I'm caution cautiously optimistic. Um, that's all I've got to say about that. Um, like I said, like the Middle Earth teams have done a great job of the past six or seven years, um, you know, since the last edition came out, you know, since they're back again, you know, the formation of the Middle Earth team. And I, comp I have... We have, I have a lot of faith in them, to be honest. Um, so that's my thoughts about that. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video about that tomorrow. So get my thoughts and opinions about that. But oh my god, guys, I'm still, lit I'm literally still like trying to process what happened. Um, you know, I was, I was expecting an article next week. I wasn't expecting it this week. So I'm kind of, you know, I, I did, I did, I put up a video last night about an hour before the, uh, well, under an hour before the uh, article went live. So I think it's kind of got lost in the algorithm with all that kind of stuff. So I, I, that, that kind of sucks. I might uh, repost that or something. But uh, go check it out if you haven't already. It's a concept of our uh, painting guides that we're going to be doing for our Battle Games and Middle Earth series. But enough about that. Let's talk about what happened. Uh, so obviously we know that we're getting an Angmar supplement, our Warring Arnor supplement. And basically GW just lost their marbles and dropped it all at once. Uh, so we've got, you know, all the models that are going to be coming out for the supplement, all the rest of them, and the actual supplement itself. Uh, we don't have a date yet. Like, there is a community article. We're going to go through it all. Um, so let's get straight into it. This is insane, guys. All right, and here we go, guys. We have the Middle Earth strategy battle game, The Rise of Angmar. I'm very, very excited, guys. So um, here we go. It says, welcome back to the Rogue Ghost ever on and on. The monthly blog cover covering all things Middle Earth. This time we'll be exploring the details of the last month's teaser and showing you everything else that's coming. So of course, this was the teaser. A lot of speculation. Is it Warriors of Khan Doom? Is it like Rudar Warriors? Is it like a hill troll or something like that? Snow trolls? Um, and it turns out to be, last month's teaser showed a crude helmet and it is the Warriors of Khan Doom. Service to the Witch King of Emma. Who garrison, who garrison his fortress at the most northern tip of the Misty Mountains. It is these men that the Witch King unleashes at the side of his Orcish armies as he seeks to bring ruin to the realm of Arnor. And as you guys can see, they are, no matter what you guys think of them, think of them they are absolutely beautiful. Um, really cool sculpts, really like interesting sculpts. Uh, of course, there's been a lot of speculation, as there always is, um, like, well, not speculation, there's been a lot of chatter around these releases as there always been. Um, not as much as the new edition, but like I said, we'll get onto that in a separate video, yeah, in tomorrow's video. But these guys have also got a lot of chatter on. Uh, specific, specifically, as if they look similar to the Dark Oath, I think they're called from Age of Sigma. Um, but to be fair, they're barbarians, like they're the like men of Khan Doom. Like, I don't know what you expect barbarians else to look like. You know, there's only, like, you know, barbarians look a certain type, uh, you know, at least from the films and, you know, games and kind of stuff. Because, of course, they were in the war in the north. They were, like, I don't know if they were technically men of Khan Doom in there. I haven't played that game in, like, you know, years since it's came out. But they, from what I remember, they are very, very similar to these poses. And I'm really excited to uh, get them. Um, of course, as you guys know, I'll be getting everything uh, that, that gets released. I'll be unboxing everything doing it all, um, you know, for the scenarios in the new book, which we will see a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so, as you guys can see, the guy with the mace here, I think uh, he is the one, actually, I don't know, is he the one with the, I, I assume he's the one with the captain, because he's like, you know, raising his arm up and like, yeah, it's me, like that kind of stuff. Um, and then we have the rest of spears, so spears or clubs, which is really interesting, or, you know, maces, um, so you can bash, which is kind of interesting. Um, of course, uh, the banner is absolutely gorgeous. Love, love the look of that banner. Very, very cool. And yeah, like, like I said, like, they're barbarians. They're gonna look like barbarians. And, you know, obviously, they're very... Uh, bar barbarians are known for, like, you know, rugged, or, you know, looks and that kind of stuff. So I don't know what you really expect, like, you know, t for, you know for, for them to look like. Um, but like I said, very, very similar to the, um, 
to the War in the North game. So I think a little bit of inspiration has been uh, taken from that. Next up, uh, well, but that's not all we have to show you, oh no. In celebration of Articon, the world's largest Middle Earth gaming event, which is happening this weekend, we are going to reveal the cover of the next Middle Earth supplement, as well as all the remaining miniatures that will be accompanying it. So we're going to see everything that's going to be coming in the supplement. So here we have the Rise of Angmar, uh, with a cool looking ring wraith on the cover. I think that might actually be Kamal from the Fellowship, but um, I, I'm not too sure. But a very, very cool cover, um, nonetheless. Um, it says this 112 page supplement covers the events of Angmar's founding, the Witch King's rise to power, and his wars with the Kingdom of Arnor. This book also includes an appendix section following the chieftains of the Dunedain before the final years of the Third Age. So that's very, very cool. So, of course, um, I believe, I don't have it with me, I think it's over there somewhere, but Defense of the North was 111 or 113, like it was very, very similar. So, expect a similar uh, size book for that. So, Scenarios, appendix, all the profiles, legendary legions, it's all going to be awesome, it's going to be cool. And again, as it says, uh, appendix session on the Chieftains of the Dunedain. I expect Arathorn's going to be in there at some point, you know, because in the old uh, Ruin of Arnold book, which I am trying to actually get, um, so I can do like a bit of a breakdown and uh, for, for you guys. I was actually going to do like a bit of a speculation video before this article comes out. I was going to do it next week, but hopefully before the article was actually going to drop. Um, but uh, I'll, I'm too late, but oh well, um, we can always talk about it. We've been talking about it, you know, in the last few months anyway, so that's okay. Um, but of course, it's going to have, there's going to have scenarios, it's going to have all the profiles, which there are quite a lot. I'm planning next week to do a video like covering everything that's, like, that's been revealed so far. Um, so it's all in one place. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, uh, then we're going to have obviously Legendary Legions and of course the uh, Appendix Scenarios, which is very, very cool. So the first one we have is Aldrak, Warlord of Khan Doom. And again, he's like the Barbarian Leader, the Warlord of Khan Doom. He's, he's buff as all hell. Um, on his Tactical Rock, of course, it's, uh, you know, staple. Gotta love a Tactical Rock. But uh, very, very interesting pose. Um, I know a lot of people have said they're not a massive fan of the aesthetic. Other people said they love the aesthetic. Um, you know, I, I just think, you know, it's cool. He's got a cool tattoo going down his arm, going down his body and on his arm as well, which is kind of cool. It's going to be interesting how to paint that, um, which is, you know, always a fun little challenge to do. Uh, like I said, I, I'm going to be getting them no matter what, guys, with the scenarios. <coughs> I assume that everything that revealed here will be in featured in at least one scenario in the book. So, as you guys know, I'm not a competitive player, I, like, by any means. Like, I have gone to events, but I don't go there to compete. I go there with narrative fluffy armies. That's just me. So, I couldn't care less what they look like. I couldn't care less, you know, what, um, uh, you know, what rules they have, you know, if they're good or if they're bad. You know, I really, really don't care. It's just, for me, it's all about the fluff. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm going to be getting them because the, it's all about the scenarios for me. So, of course, I'll be getting him because obviously he'll be in at least one scenario, I would assume. Um, and you can, guys can definitely well see that there's a little Khan Doom force uh, building up here. Because also we have a Freish, Freish, I'm going to say, um, Vassal of the Witch King. Sorry, I actually uh, went past uh, Aldrak here. We have the leader of the warriors of Khan Doom. Aldrak is a callous and barbaric leader who will stop at nothing to slaughter the people of Arnor in the name of the Witch King. When he gives, when he goes to war, Aldrak is driven into a wild battle frenzy, allowing him to declare a free heroic combat so long as he killed something in the previous turn, which is pretty insane. I assume that these guys are going to have um, hatred Arnor. I would, I would assume it would make sense. Um, but, you, you know, who knows? Um, but, you know, free heroic combat, as long as he's killed something in the previous turn, just get him smacked. Because, I don't know, is that... I don't think that's probably two, a two-handed weapon. It might be hand and a half, which might be pretty cool. Um, I, he could be burly as well, or, you know, he could be master crafted, something like that. So imagine him just going around bashing Arnold Warriors, you know, um, you know, every turn. So, what's he probably... I would imagine he's probably... For him, probably strength five. So, what the what are Arnold Warriors? The defense five with the shield or defense six? So, probably winning them. Probably winning them on fours, um, which would be pretty insane um, if he's got those rules. But if he doesn't, that's cool as well. Um, but that'd be pretty insane, you know, just going around bashing Arnold Warriors. Me, you know, maybe going into a captain, even the heroes, he probably could bash up pretty well. Um, yeah, that's very very cool. Um, 
But yeah, uh, so we have Freish, vassal, vassal of the Witch King, uh, a man of calm doom with a frantic devotion to the Witch King. Let me just go down here, guys. Oh, you guys have already seen it anyway. But, uh, Freish acts as his master advocates within the Northern Fortress. Though he doesn't possess any natural magical, actual magical powers, I should say, of his own, the men of Khan Doom believe Freish has been blessed by the Witch King himself, and that the incantations of power he chants are able to conjure strength, swiftness, and durability within those that follow him. So obviously that gives us a hint of his rules. So his incantations of power, obviously he doesn't have spells, um, more like special rules. I could imagine something on the lines of Thranduil with his... Um, uh, with his circle of kings, obviously he doesn't have any magical powers, but he has a way of casting magical abilities. Um, or, you know, s similar like Malbeth, like an evil Malbeth, of course. Um, so conjure strength, so it might be able to give, you know, uh, something, uh, you know, plus one strength, uh, swiftness, so, oh, that's obviously got to do with movement. And durability, either, you know, a save, like a, like a fate save, or like a, um, like Malbeth does, or um, fury, who knows, it could be fury as well. Um, and, or, or maybe even a defense buff, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but very, very cool model. Again, um, a definitely little Khan Doom force here, which is very, very cool. Next up, we have Arana, first chieftain of the Duna Dino. And here is the first one which I have been asking for. Um, I think, you know, we've done it in so many live streams, I completely forget which one. But I've, when I had a feeling that there was going to be an Arnold supplement, there was a few things that I really wish I wanted. One of them was Arana. Because he is in the Battle for Middle Earth 2, um, the Rise of the Witch King expansion. So he is actually in that game. And when we fe first found out that we're going to get like a supplement to do with Arnor and Aymar, I was like, surely he's going to be in there because he is the first chief in the Dunedain. You know, he doesn't become king um, after Arnor falls. Like he becomes the first chief and, you know, eventually he's the ancestor of Aragorn and Arathorn and all those kind of guys. Um, so very, very cool to see. Um, very, very cool model. I do like the pose. Very, very Aragorn, Arathorn-esque, um, which, you know, some people will say, you know, it's lazy sculpting. But for me, it's actually like a, it tell, this tells a story, you know, it's in the same uh, flavor. It's the same essence of those previous models of Arathorn and Aragorn. So it's like the family lineage um, kind of thing. So you have them all standing together. So I believe Arathorn's pose is very similar to that. I think he's just stood on the ground though. He's like a bit forward actually. And then Hero, I think it's Heroes of the West Aragorn, the Return of the King um, box, um, is very similar to like that when he's stood on a rock like that, um, which is, you know, obviously very, very cool. Um, but yeah, Ar um, Aranath, can't wait for him. Um, he does have Chieftain of the Dunedain special rule. I could imagine that's going to be something like a banner effect or something to do with courage. So it does say it helps uh, his... Uh, helps the rangers of the north uh, to fight against the corruption of Angmar. So I assume it's going to be something to do with courage, maybe a fearless, um, you know, within six inches, or something along those lines. Um, it maybe helps them fight stuff that's got low, uh, got high courage or terror, or something that's, you know, obviously um, uh, harboring of evils, you know, things along those lines. I would assume it's going to help with that. He also has expert shot, which is very, very cool. Um, so obviously, he, that means he's going to have two shots, very much like Howden. So I think he could be a very cool little model. Um, and, you know, obviously the Dunedain needs something, you know, they need some help. Um, but hopefully it doesn't become like another Rangers of Athelion list. But there's not too many heroes, and I expect that, you know, he's obviously going to, I assume, have a Legion. And you, I don't, you won't be able to take Arathorn and Aragorn. So there'll only be him and, you know, other Dunedain and Rangers of the North. So... Yeah, it could it could end up being another range of a, ranges of Athelion list, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. But um, well, again, we'll have to wait and see. Again, Dunedain are obviously more expensive as well. So there we go. Next up, we have the Shadow of Rudar, and again, um, there was a uh, um, not a model like a uh, a game but in Battle for Middle of Two. There was another one called uh, I want to say Morgamir. He was the um, he was like the second lieutenant of uh, of the Witch King in the, in that game. I believe he's called Morgan. Give me correct me if I'm wrong. If you've actually played that game, guys. <coughs> but um, as soon as I saw this guy, this guy reminded me of Morgan. Um, which is very very cool. Um, he says a twisted and mar malign spirit bound to the service of the Witch King. Quite where the shadow of Rudolph came from is a mystery long since lost. It is said that the shadow of Rudolph can manifest its own dark magic, appearing as a herald of doom. Which is obviously going to be some part of, part of his uh, special rules, I assume. Probably, I would assume, uh, harboring of evil, something along those lines. 
Um, those confronted by a special being will see their resolve ever away and the winds of fate seemingly abandon them. The winds of fate, maybe a special rule where they, they can, you know, other models can lose fate, something along those lines, who knows, probably not that crazy. <coughs> but obviously he looks like a barrel white. Channeled paralyze. If he's a is he, if he's a barrel white hero and he has paralyze, a you know a channeled paralyze with him could be insane. Um, I don't think we've actually have we ever seen a channeled paralyzed person. I'm trying to think, I don't think we have. Can anyone channel paralyze at the moment? I don't honestly know. There might be one. I'm not too sure though. Um, but again, very very cool. Um, I. Like I said, when I saw him, he definitely reminded me of... Uh, a lot of these guys actually rem remind me of the uh, Rise of the Witch King uh, campaign from uh, Battle for Middle-Earth 2, which is very, very cool. And very, very not... Like, it's going to be awesome to try and paint this guy up. Again, I'll be, I'll be, getting, I'll be getting all these guys. Um, so, you know, subscribe if you guys are new. You know, like, we'll, we'll be unboxing them. We'll be going through them all. And, of course, we'll be doing, like, an awesome uh, Rise of Angmar week when the uh, book comes out. Which would be very very cool and boards obviously i'll be building boards i might be building fornos who knows we'll have to wait and see uh birder he's got a new model um i assume that they're actually just going to release the old one i didn't actually think they were actually gonna you know make a new bird why would they you know it doesn't make sense um but he is absolutely awesome um you know what can i say i never actually owned the old birder so i assume you know we know that there's going to be some stuff coming back we know the iron ore warriors are coming back obviously they're not here so, and this is everything that's going to be coming out, so we're not going to be getting Arnold Warriors redone, unfortunately. But I can, I, obviously there's going to be Arnold Warriors coming back. And I thought Birdo was going to be the one coming back as well. I assume Gulliver will be coming back as well. You know, obviously it's Gulliver. He'll, he'll come back. But, um, I can now see him coming on to a made to order. The old Birdo, I should, I should say. Uh, I assume there's going to be like a made to order going alongside with it for something. I, I don't know, who knows. Um, but Birdo, very, very cool looking model. Um, he's got his own legendary legion, which is awesome. You can just take, you know, I assume you can just, like, it's like a troll legion, you know, as, uh, I think a lot of people have been wanting that for over the years, which is kind of cool. Um, again, a very, very cool model. And it looks like he's on a bigger base. You can see, like, an iron ore helmet down there. Um, so, I, like, it, he used to be on a 40 mil. I assume this looks like it's going to be a little bit, a little bit bigger. Maybe a 50 or a 60. I'm assuming a 60. We have... A mortal troll here. I think this is a 60 mil base, um, and I think by the looks of it, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's going to be on a 60 mil base. I think it's going to be the same size as a mortal troll. Um, obviously, getting those true scale trolls that we, you know, that we never got before. Um, you know, cave trolls are very, very ditty tiny, and then we have the Gundabad trolls, which are on you know massive uh, uh, 80 mil bases. <coughs> I don't think it'll be that big. But I dev definitely think he'll he won't be on a forty mil. He'll do, he'll be on like a sixty mil. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna guess now. I'm gonna put it lock it in Eddie. We're gonna go a sixty mil base, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, next up we have hill trolls again. Another one that I thought would be coming. Um, well, I actually predicted the snow trolls. I predicted the snow trolls because that was in Rise of the Witch King. Um, but uh, hill trolls are very very cool nonetheless, um, and they do look like like normal cave trolls, and you know a little bit a little bit more. Um, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you call it, like tatted clothing over it to help them protect them from sunlight, um, so they don't turn to stone. Um, I'm not sure if hill trolls actually do turn to stone, but we'll have to wait and see. One holding a rock, one holding like a massive sword of some kind, um, which is very, very cool. Can't, these guys look like they're really going to be a lot of fun to paint up, um, which is cool. So it says here, the hills of Angmar, Ruda, and the outer lands under the command of the Witch King are filled with more than just orcs and evil men. Hill trolls can also be found roaming there. Unlike the cave trolls and or mortal trolls, these creatures possess a keener mind, and their hill troll intelligence, uh, something also shared by Birdo, allows them to combat their enemies more uh, more effectively. So, obviously, this is something that mortal trolls and cave trolls do not have. I assume it's got something to do with um, uh, magic resistant, because they're you know. From what we know, you know, what, you know, Tolkien, you know, what everything's been going to tell in the movies, trolls are dumb. Um, they're supposed to be dumb, you know, like, you know, they're not, these guys are supposed to be a bit more smarter. So I assume it's got something to do, possibly, 
I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put, go out on a whim here and say it's got to do something with magic resistant because obviously the big downfall of trolls, the big big downfall of trolls, is that they can be immobilized easily, they can, they can be commanded, that kind of thing. So I assume it's got to do something like that, and even, you know, it, that would help them so much. But it wouldn't be broken because magic resistant, you know, you're only gonna be part, you know, it's very very rarely gonna pass. But it gives that one little chance. Um, that you know you, you can't you know you can't stop them and again these guys are very much like cave trolls so it's shoot I assume they're gonna be on 40 they could be on a 50 they look like a little bit bigger than normal cave trolls um, but again we'll have to wait and see I don't think they'll be on a 60 they're definitely smaller smaller than birdo by the by the looks of it but um, yeah I don't think they're gonna be on 40 I think they'll be on 50 50 or 60s, I think they're, they're going to be different. Obviously, they'll have different profiles than Cave Trolls, so they can be on different they can be on different bases. Um, but yeah, I think they'll be very much similar to like the Gundabad Ogus, um, and they're on 50, I believe. They're on 50 millimeter bases, so I assume it's going to be something like that. Um, and then the last thing, again, the, another thing that I uh, that was in Battle for Middle Earth 2 was werewolves, and again, something that I thought would be cool to have. And actually something that was on, I think we did, it was like two or three weeks back on a stream. We went through the War of the Ring book, which I should have got. It's not with me at the moment. It's over there. I should have got it for me. Um, but we went through um, the War of the Ring, you know, just some nostalgia stuff. And we went through some of the Angmar stuff and Werewolves was on there. Um, so now we can play Werewolves in, in War of the Ring, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, so Werewolves are here. Um, hill, I think Hill Trolls were even in that in the War of the Ring too. So a little bit of a, t a little bit of hints um, by GW. Um, but werewolves are finally here. Very, very cool. They have an ability called uh, Feral Charge. So I assume it's going to be something to, like similar to Monstrous Charge. Uh, you know, there's been some speculation going on, or like theories about maybe something to do with goats. Um, so maybe if they charge, they can, you know, roll a dice and on a five plus, they can knock someone over, you know, straight away. Um, and then, so if they win, they get double strikes again. But, um, but if, if they lose, they can't be striked because obviously someone's already knocked over. Um, so I think I assume it's going to be something like that. Um, Feral Charge, it says, can, can send this uh, foe sprawling to the ground. It doesn't say that they can damage them. Um, so I assume when they charge in, they can knock someone over straight away. Like, they don't have to wait to be um, to lose the combat. But very, very cool. Um, very, very interesting looking models. Again, <laughs> the community is uh, a bit uh, iffy about these. Very, very similar to Gothmog's Wag event, uh, apparently. Which you can definitely see the resemblance, um, definitely with the head and the mane at the back. But obviously, they are quite different. Like they've got hands, they've got you know, they they're definitely bigger. They're bigger than Gothmog's than Gothmog's Gothmog's Wag, um, which is very very cool. And you know, they're just damn cool. You know, we've been waiting for models for so long. We you know, begin drip feed, drip drip fed, drip fed for months. I can't even speak right now. I'm just so excited. Uh, we're being in drip fed for months, you know, with just one model a month, one model a month, one model. And when we get everything, oh, I don't like that, you know, but which is fine because, you know, not everyone has to like everything. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's it's good for what this represents, guys. This is good for what it represents. And again, we'll get into tomorrow. Um, I think uh, the future is quite bright. And I've already seen some videos. I'm not going to go into it because it really pisses me off. I'm sorry for saying that. But um, all the uh, all the like the clickbait that's already happened, like saying that this is like the um, you know GW is finally ending SBG and they're you know they're going out with one final bang, you know that kind of stuff, you know. And please, it really really annoys me. I'm not going to get into it because it really annoys me, and I don't want to be like that on here. Um, so it says all of this and all the other Middle Earth reveals from the past month. So that includes um, Ar Ar Aron. Agandir, which is the captain of Arnor, the Arnor Knights. We have um, Ayano, obviously, and what's his name? The Orc, I forgot, Nazthrak, I think it was his name was called. Um, will be available to pre order soon, so keep your eyes peeled on the Warmer community for more details. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's either September or October. I don't think it's going to be any later than that, considering the new edition. Um, and from what we already know, from, you know, because I've gone through. Uh, a few different posts on Facebook, on Instagram, that we're going to be hearing more about the supplement this month, um, later this month. So there'll be more than one middle. We've already had more than one Middle Earth article this month, but there'll be more to even more to come. 
So it seems like GW has lost their minds and are going deep into Middle Earth, which is awesome, you know, great to hear. Obviously, after not having anything for so long, you know, the last supplement, of course, was Defense of the North back in, uh, I think that was released in May of 2022. Obviously, we had the Battle of Asgiliath come out at the end of 2022, but it's been, you know, almost eight, it's been around 18 months, um, or maybe even a bit longer since, like, something big has dropped. Um, and it's really, it's really good to see. I can't wait for the future of the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm going to get out of here. Like I said, I'll talk about all the new edition stuff tomorrow, guys. So let's just keep this about the new stuff that's coming out for Angmar and Arnold. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What are you guys excited for? What are you guys going to be picking up first? And like I said, I'll be picking up everything. I, I'm not even going to say what's on my, on my, on my, um, in my basket first because it'll be all of it. I do hope, I'm going to say this now, I do hope it all comes out separately. I don't want it all to drop at once because I need, my bank account's going to cry. Um, so maybe, you know, have some of the Arnold stuff drop first and then, you know, a week or two later that the Amar stuff drop. Um, something like that. I don't want it to all drop at once because that's going to be a lot. With the Men of Khan Doom, we've got the two heroes. We've got the, sh the not, I was going to have to call it the Shade, but the, uh, what was it called? The, um, the Shadow of Ruda. We have Birder, we have the Hill Trolls, we have the Werewolves, we have Aranath, then we have the Little Orc, then we have uh, the Knights of Arnor, then we have Ayana, and then we have Agandir. That's 13 releases, um, I believe. I think that's 13 releases, plus the book, so that's 14. 14 releases, that's a pretty big one. Um, we had, was it 15 new profiles in, was it 16, in Defense to North? So... 13, was it, did I say 12 or 13? Well, 12 or 13 new profiles in um, the Rise of Angmar, which is kind of crazy if you ask me. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys are going to be picking up first and I'll get out of here. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, happy gaming.